الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters Now this video inshallah is going to be a summary of all the content we've put out thus far on the issue of voting, democracy and the upcoming elections Some of you have requested that we do a shorter version as all the previous videos were over an hour long um, So inshallah within these next 10-15 minutes we're going to summarize those four hours worth of content Hopefully it should become a lot clearer for you guys. Now as always, inshallah, we're going to be going back to the fatawa of the ulama, the understanding of the ulama, as alhamdulillah, we always do. But I know some people are still going to have an issue regardless. They're going to click on this video, see my face and be like, he's young. Why is he talking about this? He shouldn't be speaking about these issues. First of all, say Allahumma barik, I don't want to get evil eye. Secondly, again, like I said, I'm not speaking from my own understanding. I won't be giving you anything from my own understanding, it's from the ulama. But I know some of you are still going to have a problem regardless. So for you guys, my advice inshallah is pull out Snapchat or another face changing uh, app and just put an aged face on my face and hopefully that should give peace to your heart and you'll be able to listen to the point at hand with a clear, neutral, balanced mind. With that in mind, let's get straight into the first question. What is democracy? Democracy is a system of governance and legislation whereby which the people selected an authority, they enforce law, they create and legislate and come up with law, and then they also interpret the law themselves. So in other words, it's man-made law, interpreted by man and enforced by man. Okay, so what's the relationship between democracy and voting? Voting in a general election is actually the foundation upon which a democratic government stands. Without a general election, there would be no democracy. If we've established that a democracy is a system of governance where the people have supreme sovereign power to legislate, enforce and interpret legislation, then that means that voting in a general election actually authorizes and gives that power to this group of elite who will rule and govern over you. What that means is that by you participating in a general election, you're affirming that supreme sovereign power starts with you as the individual. You as an individual have the right to enforce, interpret and create legislation. But the reason why you're voting is because you're saying, I don't want to do this. I want someone else to do it on my behalf. So I'm going to cast this vote and transfer that supreme sovereign authority to legislate, enforce and, and interpret legislation from myself to this elective candidate and he or she is going to legislate and enforce upon my behalf. So in essence, by you voting, you actually affirm sovereign power to rule and legislate and govern to yourself and then you transfer that sovereign power from yourself and that sovereign authority to this elected candidate and that's the relationship between voting and a democracy without voting there would be no democracy without voting there would be no individuals who are creating enforcing and interpreting legislation themselves okay that's fine but is islam compatible with democracy Anyone who truly understands the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to answer that question very easily. We've just established that democracy necessitates that the people are the sovereign authority, right? The sovereign power. Yet we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sovereign authority. He's the sovereign power, the sovereign legislator. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not al-malikul mulk? Is he not the sovereign king? Of course he is. By now a person actually participating in the democratic process of governance, this person is actually saying, I am besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a sovereign as well. And this obviously would be a form of shirk. There are many evidences for this brothers and sisters and you can refer yourself to the two hour chai with my bai session that we did on this issue by going to the link below. But I think one evidence would suffice for this video. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah At-Tawbah اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أرباب من دون الله Allah said, talking about the people of the book that they took their rabbis and their monks as gods Now, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa recited this verse there was a companion called Adi radiyallahu anhu who said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, the Christians, they never worship their monks as the verse says, they took their monks as gods. He said they never took them as gods. And the Prophet told them that yes, they did take them as gods. Why? Because 
they let their monks make halal for them what Allah made haram. And they let them change what Allah made haram into halal. So in other words, they were changing legislation. And because the people allowed and followed their monks in doing that, they became the gods of these people. They ended up taking these monks as their gods. Now, if we apply that to democracy, brothers and sisters, whoever it may be that you elect as a candidate, you're electing this person ultimately. Why? Because you want this person to legislate in your favor. You want them to legislate in your behalf, in your favor, right? So ultimately, they're going to take and they're going to change some things that Allah made halal and made them haram. And they're going to change things which Allah made haram and make them halal. And if you follow them in that, rather by voting you authorize them in doing that, then how would you be any different to those Christians who let their monks do that for them and follow their monks in doing that for them? The ultimate conclusion was that they took those monks as their gods. And if you do that today, you're at risk of taking this politician and making him or her your god as well. With all of this in mind, brothers and sisters, there's no way in any way, shape or form where voting in such an election could actually be justified or compatible with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, for more information, you can go to the link below. Okay, but Sheikh Uthaymeen, Sheikh Ibn Ubaz, Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Wasiullah Abbas, and other than them have permitted voting. So are you saying they got it wrong? Now here is where the discussion took place between both parties. Imam Ibn Baz and Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah said that you can vote, but only in a situation where it is a necessity, meaning a harm will come to you and there's no other alternative. But not just that, one of the conditions of necessity is that it has to be possible that by you doing this haram in this necessary situation, this haram would actually take the harm away from you that you're running away from. That this vote would actually bring about some possible change. That's a condition that these great and noble ulama, they placed on their fatwa and they said you can vote. In other words, you can vote in times of necessity, but there has to be a possibility for real change to take place if you cast that vote. Good. Now, the scholars such as Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i, Sheikh Muhammad Khalil al-Harras, and even Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan today, they actually went one step further because they actually had the benefit of living in a democracy and actually analyzing it, observing it and coming into physical contact with it, they came to the conclusion that the way that democracy is structured and the way that it's set up, it's impossible for real beneficial change to come about. So you see, they're not disagreeing. One group said, if the change can come, you can vote. The other is saying, they're not denying that. But they're just saying there is no room for change. It's impossible for change. Democracy doesn't allow for change. And do you know why they came to that conclusion? It's because as we all know, democracy, it is built upon what the majority want. If the majority wants something, the majority will get it. Now, what does Allah tell us about the majority in the Quran? Allah said, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you follow the majority of those who are on the earth, you'll be misguided, showing you that the majority are misguided. أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The majority of them will not believe. The majority are ignorant. The majority do not want khair. So if you as a Muslim are looking for khair, if you as a Muslim are looking for a beneficial outcome to benefit you and your religion, then that's not going to come from democracy because the majority are always misguided and the majority will always want, to want misguidance and misguidance is in direct opposition to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason, it is a mirage for you as a minority with a very minority set of values and norms and, 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 and morals to expect for something to come out in your favor where the majority are in direct opposition to you. I hope that clarifies the situation a little bit more. And brothers and sisters, it would also make sense for us to follow the fatwa of the ulama such as Sheikh Muqbil, because like I said, they actually lived in a democracy. Whereas Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, they didn't actually live in a democracy. They lived in a kingdom under a monarchy. So they didn't come into direct first-hand contact on a day-to-day -day basis with such a system. So that's why for them, they stopped with their fatwa at the correct place. They said, if, if. And the ulama who actually lived in democracy, they had the time and the opportunity to take it a step further and say that if is not real. There is no possibility for this change to come. To the point where even now Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah, who is alive and well today, alhamdulillah, living in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, who has looked into this matter more, has also come and corroborated his fatwa with the fatwa of his colleagues who 
have said it's also haram. So for that reason, they don't actually, we're not actually saying they're wrong, they're right. We're, they're right, we're following their fatwa. The condition that they place, if change should come, we're following the ulama who said the change can't come. And that is very evident, and we see that on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so none of the scholars are actually in disagreement. One group just said, if that change will come, if that necessity is there, it becomes permissible for you to vote. The other group said, that necessity is never there because that change will never occur. Let me give you guys an example. Let's say, for example, there's someone in the desert and he's dying of thirst and the only thing available to drink is alcohol. If he doesn't drink it, he will die. Based on the principles in the religion that the haram becomes halal in a necessity, it would become permissible for him to drink the alcohol. And that's what Sheikh Uthaymeen, Sheikh bin Baz and so on and so forth are saying. If he's going to die, he could drink the alcohol. The other group of scholars have come and said, look, we've gone one step further. We did a diagnosis on him. He's not dying of thirst. He's just got a runny nose. He's got a flu. That's it. He's not going to die if he doesn't drink the alcohol. Therefore, that necessity is not even there in the first place. So he doesn't need to drink it. It's not permissible for him to drink it. So do you see, they're not in disagreement. One saying, if that necessity is there, it's permissible. The other one saying, that necessity isn't even there. Therefore, it is not permissible. But now, what about the one who comes and says, no, democracy is from Islam. Democracy is shura. What do you have to say about that? Democracy is from Islam. Okay, that's, uh, that's a new one for the books. Well, to answer this question, let us take a look at when democracy actually came about. If we take the classical view that it came around at the time of the Greeks as an ideological concept, then that means democracy was before Islam by almost a millennium. If you take the view that it only actually reared its head in a practical, real, actualized sense after the French Revolution in the late 1700s, then that means it came around about a millennium after Islam. So either way, democracy missed Islam from a millennium before it or a millennium after it. And I don't think it can be reconciled in any way, shape or form to say that they're exactly the same. Not only to add on to that, that no scholar ever said that democracy in Islam is the same. I don't know where someone will get such an outrageous statement from. And to say that shura and democracy are the exact same thing. Well, we've already established that democracy is where people come together to create law. Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullah in his great noble tafsir mentioned that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would do shura with his companions, he never did it on issues of legislation. So how can shura have anything to do with democracy? Well, one creates legislation and one works in accordance to the legislation that, own, that has already come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For more information on this, you can go to our chai with my bai below and watch the full discussion on the issue of voting. So all of the ulama, they all agreed democracy is not from Islam, it's kufr, it's haram, it's not a system of Islam. But in a certain situation, some of them said it's permissible to vote. So the one who says that democracy is from Islam and tries to prove that, has gone against all of the scholars. Going back to the alcohol example, it's as if someone coming and saying, look, necessity or not, it's permissible to drink alcohol. Compare the two examples. It's exactly the same. You're saying it's permissible in and within of itself. It's from the religion. So you're saying alcohol is permissible in and within of itself. Again, that's just the example. I'm not saying anyone's permitted alcohol. Don't misquote me. So going back as a quick summary, so these noble ulama, they said, if that real change will occur, you can vote as a necessity, as a last resort. We agree with them. If that change could occur, if that change will occur for the Muslims and that necessity is there, you can vote. But we go with the scholars who took it one step further. They said that change will never occur because of the way democracy is set up. That change will never happen. And quite frankly, they're the ones who lived in the democracy. They saw the fruits of democracy and therefore they, f they did not permit voting. So brothers and sisters, hope you guys have benefited inshallah. And hopefully you guys can enjoy this video. Uh, until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace.